Hey folks, Jonathan here. Uh, raining out. Uh, looks like we're going to have to postpone our rat rod build until next Saturday. Which we didn't want to do, but that's okay. Uh, been in the shop here since it's raining and we're just sitting around waiting on wrecks to happen and cars to break down and people to get stuck. So I figured I'd come out here in the shop and work a little while. And uh, pulled the flywheel off of this engine. And... Uh, had a lot of lot of trouble getting it off. I, you know, pulled a lot of flywheels, but this thing here just didn't want to come off. I ended up using a, on my balance puller and, uh, you know, the bearing puller. But uh, it just about galled my threads up. It was pulling so hard, and uh, and I cleaned the shaft and filed it and before I done it, but I got it off anyway. And uh, that brings us to what flywheel we're going to use. Uh, Got two different flywheels here, and they're both you know they're close in diameter. Of course, the uh, the chrome one there, well chrome plated cast is what it is. It's uh it's right much heavier, and uh, this is actually a gear. It's not a flywheel, but uh, it's an old gear. But I think I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm going to have to bore the hole and cut a cut the keyway in it uh, or broach it in, but. Uh, I like that wheel. That that's actually the front wheel off of a uh, an exercise bike, and it uh, had plastic covers over each side of it to make it look like it had spokes. And I picked it up for junk and pulled it apart. And I think I'm going to use that flywheel on a beam engine that I have planned coming up. And uh, the uh, it's heavier, and I mean it's probably a little heavy for the the steam engine that we're building right now anyway or a little duplex but uh, so I'm going to use this this is an old curve spoke this is a uh, actually came off an old hand crank uh, uh, Chicago flexible shaft company is who made it and it was actually a hand crank for a sheep shear and uh, it was busted up pretty bad and luckily it didn't bust the flywheel and uh, you know the shaft and the, the cutter and all that or the clippers I guess you call them they was all missing so we uh we saved that off of it. I actually used another little part on one of my hit and miss engines I built, so uh, that was that'll work out nice. You know, it's not real heavy. It's a pretty good diameter though, it's way bigger. I'll show you the in comparison to the what came off of it. And uh and we'll probably you know the base is gonna be too short to do it and you know not hit hit the floor or nothing, so we'll probably build a Something, you know, oak or something well, underneath it and underneath and bolt it to it. Uh, a little skid or something. So, it, you know, not a big deal. Uh, working on this a little bit more. Trying to get the, uh, trying to get the surface out of it. My Still got a few milling scratches in it. Not real bad, but uh, just a few I want to get out. And you can see there's a lot of pit in here and there, but, you know, looking it over real good, there's, uh, there's an, actually enough room everywhere for this thing to, to seal. And uh, like I said, it's going to be a half inch plate on top of it, bolted in. I'm going to go through and mark where I can put bolts at. And uh, I actually done it once before I started sanding just to get an idea. But, uh, you know, of course we can't run into the cylinders and uh, we can't run, get it in the way of the piston or anything like that. So we've got to make sure that we real careful about where we put them. But I'm going to put a lot of bolts in it. Uh, thinking about possibly leaving the bolts inside building our steam chest on the outside of it and then actually making bolts to hold the top of the steam chest on separate instead of running them all the way through like I did on the other one and uh, that's probably what we'll end up doing and you know just make a gasket and use uh, Indian head and you know like I said the pits are not going to hurt it I mean I've got enough area around every one of them that uh, that they're going to seal off fine as long as I you know get enough bolts in it and We'll get the pressure on it and then uh but it's coming along uh took the plate off the top where the motor mounted to and uh pretty neat looking i mean it's probably uh looks a little more modern than what our flywheel looks but it you know it don't matter we're just uh we're just doing this for the fun of it but uh these here where they've been welded back i'm sure what happened you know that's not a, anything from a freeze crack somebody had over tightened you know the cylinder onto it because you know you're actually smashing it between these and uh, I'm sure they just tightened it too tight and broke them off and 
you know they brazed them back on looks like they've done a good job on this too and uh so we'll we'll try to smooth it out some and make it look good and, Okay, folks, since uh, there's so many machinists out there showing you the right way to do things, I, I figured I'd be the one to show you the wrong way of doing them. Uh, we've got our gear here, which is going to be our flywheel. What I've done was I set up the, uh, the old Camelback drill press, Superior, and I hadn't done a, well, I hadn't really done the big video on this yet, but I mean, this is a, a Superior that I got from a, a friend of mine, uh, Doozer, down in Charlotte, and uh, what I done was, I actually took, this is a 5 8 hole, and we're going out to 3 quarter. So I took a 5 8 bit, put it in the drill, uh, got it centered in there, and then clamped it down. And then, uh, of course, we made sure my table was locked where the table can't move. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up, and I'm going to put a boring head in it, and uh, go ahead and bore it out to, to 3 quarter using this. And uh, I, know, I know this is not a mill, and, uh, and I haven't tried it with it before, but we'll it's got power feed and stuff on it, so we're just going to see how it does. But uh, I'll get the boring head set up, and uh, I'll show you from there. Okay, folks, I got this thing set up on back gear, so it's going to be really slow. But And the feed is real slow on it. I'm not going to put it in a high speed, uh, which I don't think it matter anyway. It's got four speed power feed, but four gear would be real slow anyway. But we're just going to feed it down one time, see what it looks like. Okay, we've got it going down in there now. Uh, the reason that I'm not using a three-quarter drill bit is I've never been able to drill a three-quarter hole with a three-quarter drill bit and it actually come out three-quarter. You're always going to have a little bit off. And uh, I want to get this thing as close to three-quarter as I can. And uh, I think this will work out just fine. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll find out. I mean, I'm not saying this is the right way to do it by any means. And I could have uh, set it up on the vertical mill, but I just want to see what we can do with this. Was light. We've still got about 50,000 to go, so we'll shut the machine down and then, uh... Okay, folks, we've got her all done here, and uh, we'll uh, look and see what we've got here. As you can see, it's about a half thousandth over. So uh, I think that'll do just fine. We'll see how she fits on there, but it seems like you've done a fine job. I don't think there's any problem with it. Uh, you know, I know this ain't the right way of doing it, but, uh, you know, you do what you got to do, and this is not that critical. I mean, uh, we're not turning no high RPMs or anything like that, but uh, we'll see how it works out on there, and, you know, we'll check the run out on it, and, and uh, I think it's going to be fine, though, and uh, don't know. I don't recommend, you know, milling with the drill press but I mean this is never seen anybody use a boring bar one in one either but you know we'll try it and see what it does show you shortly okay folks we got her on there uh, one of the really good things about this gear or flywheel we're gonna call it is uh, it's so narrow that it leaves me a lot of space here because I've got to run two eccentrics on this so uh, that's a real good thing but uh, we've got it just as good as we can get it. And uh, the flywheel's got a little bit of a warp in it, but uh, or the gear does, but it's not a big deal. Uh, it's not enough that anybody's ever going to question it or notice it. I've seen worse on hit-and-miss engines, so we're good to go there. And uh, it, uh, it actually runs straight all but one one spot. It's got one little wobble there that, that jumps out on it. But... Uh, but I think she'll be just fine. I sort of like that uh, that curved spoke flywheel look anyway. So, uh, but that's what we'll what we're gonna run. I went ahead and bore this out and stuff before I go back on my steam chest. I just want to see how it was gonna look and how it was gonna work out. So, but uh, hole worked out fine. Uh, went on a little bit tight, but there was some problems with this shaft anyway, and it's was buggered up pretty bad from that other one coming off it was really galled on there pretty bad but uh i think this is going to work out really good and like i said that gives us enough room we can get our eccentrics on there and run our uh, run all our time and our levers and uh so i'll go ahead and get back on that uh that steam chest and 
and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, folks, I finished up all the lapping I'm going to do on this thing to, to smooth it out. Uh, really, a couple little real light lines in it, but, you know, nothing major. And, of course, you can see all the all the spots that are pitted. And there's actually a hole through here. I'm not sure where it goes. I, yeah, I'm assuming it goes to the center port here. Because it don't go into the, uh, the cylinder. So, uh, we'll have to... Uh, of course the gasket will cover it and it'll be fine I don't see any problem with that uh, you know like I said there's gonna be plenty of places for it to seal uh, it's pretty good around the, the edges there so I think it'll be fine what I'm gonna do now is go around with a sharpie and actually put a dot everywhere that I want to put a bolt and uh, you know I've got to make sure I don't hit these bolts and uh, like I said I don't want to get into anything thin and you know, it's, it's actually pretty thick in between, and it's, you know, it's pretty thick at the edge, too, so. And uh, we're going to put a dot on it, and then uh, everywhere we want to put a bolt, and then I will, uh, I'm hoping I can lay a piece of paper over it and see the dots and be able to, to uh, transfer them to the paper. And then uh, after that, we will transfer them to the plate, drill the plate, and then go through the holes in the plate and center punch all the places for the holes hopefully if it works out like I'm hoping here uh, and then we'll drill and tap it and go ahead and at least get started on the steam chest here I'll show you some more shortly okay folks here's what I come up with I've, uh, I've actually got 16 holes in it 16 bolts and uh, I think they'll work just fine where I've got them and so we will uh, We'll mark them out on a on a sheet. My paper I've got here is a little bit too thick. I've got to go find something a little bit thinner and something I can see through and get these marked and try to get them on the on that plate where I need them. And then uh, we'll go from there. Uh, hey folks, I want to show you one more thing here real quick. I know that flywheel looked big on there on just that the pump, but you can see the with the sonar on it, it sticks out a pretty good ways. So I mean, it actually looks pretty. Looks pretty good, and uh, I think it'll work out just fine. But we're gonna we'll go ahead and end this one at this, and uh, I've got to get me some thin paper. I don't have anything thin enough to to see through to get them marks like I need. Uh, I think this is gonna be a really nice looking engine when it's done. Uh, I think I'm gonna paint this one red, and uh, we might put a little bit of of brass on this one and try to make it look good. And, uh, you know, it looks rough now, but we'll get it all taken apart and cleaned up and sandblasted and everything and uh, do a little a little more grinding on my welds on this one than I did the other one and go ahead and, you know, make it look right. I think I can, uh, I think I can do a little work on that uh, steam chest and make it look like it's cast iron. Uh, I used to do a little bit of that when I, when I tractor pulled and tried to make it, you know, some steel or did make steel look like cast iron and and also uh, made cut off smooth cast iron look like rough cast iron like it was casted and uh, so I think we can uh, I think we can do that but uh, anyway thanks for subscribing and uh, we'll get back on this thing and, and get her done here uh, raining pretty bad out there and it's uh, you know no climate controlled shop here so you know everything's gonna start getting getting wet and I don't you know I don't like that machines I don't know what you want to call it uh, do or sweat or whatever you want to call it but they I don't like that and I'm gonna wipe everything down here real quick and get some oil on the the ways and the beds and everything on my machines so they don't uh, so they don't rest rust up by morning but uh, I may get back on this this evening and we'll see what we can get done bye